So I've been checking out the reviews by various comic book and movie nerds on YouTube. And some of them are saying Black Panther Wakanda Forever is a disaster, it's garbage, it's the end of the road for Marvel, and blah blah blah. I think a lot of the guys I follow have kind of jumped the shark with their hatred for Disney and I'm kind of over it. Yeah, Disney Marvel has made a lot of crud recently, but this is easily the best thing Disney Marvel has done in quite a while. And that includes Spider-Man No Way Home. Yeah, I said it. I didn't like Spider-Man No Way Home. For me, Wakanda Forever is almost awesome. I liked it far more than the first film, and it has renewed my faith in Ryan Coogler's career as a writer and director. However, that does not mean this movie doesn't have problems. Here's a brief spoiler-free rundown of the basic plot. King T'Challa, played by the late Chadwick Boseman, dies from a mysterious illness, and now the nations of the world perceive Wakanda is weak, and they are trying to exploit Wakanda for its vibranium. The US government has developed a machine that can detect vibranium, and in the government's quest to find vibranium, they accidentally discover an ancient underwater Mayan civilization led by Namor, played by Tenoch Huerta, or Tenoch Huerta? I don't know. And they have decided to declare war on the surface world. The Wakandans, led by Shuri, played by Letitia Wright, the Queen, played by Angela Bassett, and their General Okoye, played by Denai Gurira, must stop the Talokans from overthrowing the world. Oh yeah, by the way, the, the Mayan civilization is called Taloka. I loved the visuals in this movie. They were able to put some serious money behind it, and it looks like they gave the art department enough time to get their job done. So we get some large and impressive practical sets and very beautiful costume design. The computer effects are also a vast improvement over the 2018 Black Panther. I loved seeing the Mayan culture on full display here. The people of Taloka have beautiful costumes with big bright headdresses and hats made out of, you know, different underwater sea stuff like a shark cartilage and Namor's throne is sitting in a giant megalodon jaw, which was pretty awesome. I also feel we got a much better look at the actual city life of Wakanda as well. There's a scene where two Wakandan guards open up a force field to the city by playing drums in a secret beat. And it felt like that scene in Undercover Brother where he does the secret handshake with the robot arm to get into the secure facility. And he's doing all these fancy handshakes and then the computer says, Blackness confirmed. You got sold. Oh, I wanted the Wakandan computer to say blackness confirmed so badly. We all know the Wakandan salute and they try to give the uh, Talokans their own little hand gesture which looks like a Hadouken from Street Fighter or like the Baby Shark from the Baby Shark song. Yeah, that's definitely not going to catch on. The soundtrack is pretty epic, too. I think it's easily the best soundtrack of any Disney Marvel film, and I don't even like hip-hop or world music or whatever you want to call it. The main problem preventing this movie from being fantastic is the runtime is too long and there is not enough action to break up the monotony. The fact that the runtime is so long is kind of a double-edged sword in this case. On the one hand, it feels nice that we have enough time to breathe and flesh out each of these characters and get that slow burn buildup of the eventual conflict between the Wakandans and the Talokans. On the other hand, I think Marvel movies should emphasize the action. These are movies about people with superhuman abilities, so we want to see these people do superhuman things. I worry that the runtime and small number of fight scenes will hinder the rewatchability of this movie. Also, a lot of the action takes place in the dark, and the Regal Theater I go to has a real problem with the brightness of their projectors, so I wasn't able to enjoy the visual effects as much as I wanted to. Regal, you have lost my business. I'm going to AMC from now on. Also, I was not a fan of Riri Williams' Ironheart and her suit. In case you don't know, Riri Williams is basically the female version of Iron Man. And her suit looks like a rejected robot design from the movie Real Steel. If you already saw Wakanda Forever and you thought it was too boring, I get it. I also could have used more action and a better choreographed finale, but at least it didn't feel and look like a cheesy Saturday morning cartoon. I would rather watch this again than Doctor Strange 2, Thor, Love and Thunder, or Spider-Man No Way Home. 